It's been a month since I have the product with me. I've tried out the Ronin MX and you would see the footage of that. But what we will look at right now is a basic assembling of the Ronin MX and certain tips and tricks in terms of using it while shooting, putting the Ronin MX together, balancing the camera, etc. This is the basic grip of the Ronin MX. Now I've made some adjustments to this. For example, I've added a tab holder to it as an additional screen. This is basically from uh, Cycle Shop and it also has a Ronin MX thumb control. So these are the only changes to the existing grip. What we also have is the camera that I've used for largely for most of the shoot, the Canon 5D Mark III, and I have two sets of lenses. Now why are we going to see two different set of lenses is because the zoom lens is much more heavier and requires a bit of more assembling of the three axis and some additional tools that you need to use which are already there in the Ronin MX toolbox. On the other hand, a 50mm lens which is quite light, the difference in both is that you basically can configure and start shooting quite fast if you're doing the first level assembling, even the minor adjustments I need you to make. Now the Ronin MX uh, comes with two different set of batteries that you would have already seen. I have fixed both the batteries on this. One is specifically as a standby if you are not using any additional gadgets or it can be used to power any additional gadgets that you might need. The basic assembling is rather quite easy. The knob faces forward and the additional lock that you have here that goes backwards and you just slide it in and you hear a click sound and all you do is basically tighten the screws. Now what you need is to balance the three axes now, before you start balancing, you need to mount everything that you need to mount on the camera. Because any change in the weight can actually tilt the balance. For a lighter lens, what you largely require is the plate upon which the camera is going to get fixed that will go into the axis, a spanner which is already comes with it and a screw. The part which has these three screws faces forward and there is a reason why it needs to be there because there are some additional tools that you can tether to this for heavier zoom lenses. Once the, the plate is attached to the camera, all you need to do is just slip it through. And again, that also has a lock where you will hear a click. I need to do a basic configuration of the three axes. It remains to stay balanced, one, this way. Now, because it is leaning forward, that means that I need to push the plate back a bit. It's almost balanced. Now the camera is falling downwards. That means that the entire body is actually a little more lower on this axis than it should be. That means I need to raise this a couple of centimeters higher. Now if you see, the camera is holding horizontally, but it's tilting to this side. That means I need to do the centering of the camera. I need to move the camera a little to the other side. And that happens using these knobs. There you go. If you see, all the three axes are pretty much well balanced. Now why you need to balance the camera on all the three axes before you start shooting or switching on the Ronin MX is because the more balanced already it is, the less battery is going to use while shooting. You can actually see that if it is not well balanced and if it is using too much of power, it will start shivering. Now let's switch on the Ronin MX and see how well balanced it is. Now I have configured this in such a way that the camera follows my movement but in a much slower acceleration and in a, with a little bit of delay. Now for attaching the same camera with a much more heavier zoom lens, uh, before I attach the plate onto the camera, I need to attach a zoom holder. This basically supports the lens. As I said, the plate forward. And with the wedge is, the wedge comes over this as its additional support. Once we attach this, this goes onto the camera. If you see, it kind of gives an additional support to the lens. Now let's attach this to the Ron MX. This is the second tethering tool that is basically slide in to the top of the camera. The Ron is switched on right now and compared to the the initial set of 50mm and the camera where we did some amount of manual balancing even without any balancing you see that the power consumption is quite meager so this is the basic configuration of the Ronin MX gimbal we will look at two additional things to start with the additional tab holder 
in which I also have the DSLR app for controlling the camera. So this is how the tab goes on to the holder. Along with the data cable that you've received for the camera, you will obviously need to buy another connector. As you can see, even when I'm holding the Ronin in the briefcase mode, or if I'm holding the Ronin in the traditional way, I can still view the view that I have on the camera on the additional tab. This has a DSLR controller on it. As I said, I can record. I can do all the basic controlling of the camera with this. We will also look at the DJI Assistant. The first time you attach a Ronin and a camera set to the DJI Assistant, you need to do a calibration of the system. If you see in the background, uh, the calibration is actually going on. These are the two particular criteria that you need to check. As long as the angles are within 10, it is absolutely fine, plus or minus. As long as the power is within 5, that means there is not too much of usage of battery. You can manage the pan, tilt and roll axis, the strength and the stiffness, depending on once you shoot and you kind of get used to it. You have many other controls in this. Basically, you can do all kind of motion control and configuration on this particular app. Now, one thing that you really need to be, uh, uh, you need to take into consideration is the weight of the gimbal along with the camera and the additional tools that you have. Primarily for an evenly built person, I would assume you cannot shoot for more than maybe about two to three minutes in one stretch. So you need to ensure that you have the stand with you all the time if you are shooting alone. Or you need to have a provision for somebody to hold between the shots. I had a particular difficulty, especially when I was shooting a dance choreography. Because there were multiple takes being done at the same time. Whereas while I was shooting some of the other location shoot or film shoot, there were enough breaks between the shots. Otherwise, you would see the footage and you would see it's an amazing machine and it makes the whole process of filmmaking out of the world. Thumbs up to DJI. This is an awesome product and I'm happy that I bought it.